We are back. It's the Joe Holka Show presented by Line Movement. If you're listening to this on the podcast feed, wondering where the video was this week, here to remind you, as always, this is the one segment per week that will live exclusively on the Line Movement YouTube channel. So if you're already here, welcome in, do us a solid, toss a like on this video, consider subscribing, all that good stuff, ton of live streams and content coming your way each and every day. So make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss anything along the way. You're doing all of these things, right? Because we're going to continue to bring you guys value. That includes bringing on some of the best guests in the industry on my show and on at livemovement.com. So one of those people, of course, joins me again today, TJ Hernandez, the director of DFS at 4 for 4 Football. TJ, how was your week 15? More importantly, anything uh, fun planned for the holidays? Or are you just kind of hanging out, uh, drinking terrible beer? You know what? Um, I don't know if you know what cash games are, but uh, I actually had Never my best cash had my best cash game week of the year, so that was nice. Uh, Jalen Hurts was uh, was very uh, profitable, and then yeah, Merry Christmas, man. No, uh, it's grinding, man. This is what we signed up for. We miss holidays, uh, we miss birthdays for four months out of the year because we got to grind extra slates. So I'll be uh, getting after showdown, getting after Saturday only, and uh, and social distance celebrating. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, recording this on Christmas Eve. So for all those people in the comments that want to give us shit when uh, things go differently uh, before lock, uh, we're a little bit early, but it is a holiday. So we're going to get you guys the answers to the test at least uh, early in the week. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff going on. We got to make everyone happy, TJ. Uh, but that's uh, that's the job we signed up for, like you said. So looking forward to taking uh, tomorrow off uh, for the first time in quite a while. You mentioned Jalen Hurts, TJ. Uh, he happens to be your quarterback lock of the week for week 16. He's 7k obviously another great matchup against dallas i know there's a lot of season long implications with the jalen hurts uh, i guess uh emergence recently though but it sounds like this price tag isn't scaring you off this week yeah i think a lot of people will look at the performance last week uh wonder if it's chasing points uh look at the price hike on DraftKings. he's up 1100 dollars. wonder if it's worth paying up for it um i mean relative to the other big name quarterbacks on the slate he's still pretty cheap you're getting him at a thousand dollar discount to uh to Lamar and then Mahomes is priced through the roof. Uh rightly so. I mean the Chiefs have a huge uh, total compared to the rest of the field, but then we don't have a lot of the other big names on the slate. We don't have Josh Allen, we don't have Aaron Rodgers um on the slate, we don't have Kyler on the slate. So uh if we're looking for value from a, a dual threat guy, I mean Jalen is still a relative value. I know seven K is expensive for a quarterback on DraftKings, but uh, he has over 80 yards rushing average in his two games, over 100 in the first game, 64 in a touchdown uh, last week. And we saw that he offers a lot of passing upside. That was what he was missing in his first game. That was a really tough matchup against New Orleans. And then Arizona was a middling matchup. Uh, but we expected that uh, even with a middling matchup, he would uh, show some ceiling and he showed all of the ceiling. So Dallas, similar, uh, 17th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Uh, and then they have allowed at least 21 and a half uh, points to quarterbacks in four of the last six games. So definitely a, a floor there because of his rushing and we saw this ceiling. So uh, I, I really love Jalen in this spot. Dallas has some really uh, sketchy corners. So there's a lot to take advantage of there. Yeah, I love it. Obviously, last week against the Cardinals, he took six sacks, but still got uh, double-digit rushing attempts again. And I think the difference between these type of rush attempts and ones that just happen is these are the designed runs, right? So he is yeah. a, a definitely yeah. a part of the game plan in that way. And some te- we've seen it almost every year. We, we see someone kind of come out of nowhere. We saw the Colin Kaepernick year a couple of years back in the playoffs. No one knew how to defend him. We saw the Lamar Jackson, uh, the Josh Allen emergence late in the year. So sometimes it takes these defenses a little bit longer uh, to get there. So I, I love that call. Uh, TJ, I am going to give you a chance to talk about your boy Jalen Rager though because it sounds like you think he's in for a big week as well uh with her so a lot of people are probably figuring out like who to stack should they just go naked but you seem pretty clear on that one yeah I mean just kind of started digging yesterday and uh averaging six targets per game in the two games with Hertz and obviously a lot of people are going to look at two game sample but it's all we have to go on right like we only have two full games with Hertz and we need to jump out ahead of these things um before the the public does or else we get a ownership spike or a, or a price spike or both. And then uh, the value's kind of gone. So 
Uh, if we're looking at how they've been using Rager with Hertz, uh, he's top 25 in the league in air yards in those two games. Uh, four for four has a metric that uh, is called expected touchdowns uh, in the air yards app that just kind of looks at where the uh, targets are on the field. And even though Rager's trailing uh, Goddard in targets, he does lead the team uh, in expected touchdowns. And then on top of that, I mentioned Dallas's, uh, they have very susceptible corners. Uh, but also he's going to be surrounded by very chalky players. Hertz is going to be very chalky at quarterback and Goddard should be pretty chalky at tight end. On top of that, if Zeke is out, I know we're waiting on that news. We're going to have mega chalk on Pollard on the other side. So Rager is going to offer a ton of leverage. And I just really like him uh, in a breakout spot um, with the rookie quarterback. I, I know that's a little narrative street there, but uh, I think it's one that we should definitely jump on this week. And he's cheap. So we don't really have uh slam dunk su sub 5K receiver on DraftKings, at least as of this recording. So even in cash, if you're just looking to pay down, like I'm fine punting contrarian on your wide receiver three um, and kind of just chasing that upside in cash games when there isn't an obvious uh, value saver there. Yeah, I like that one a uh, lot. I think there's going to be some other chalky options uh, in that game in particular. So let's actually stay at wide receiver for a second, TJ, because your wide receiver lock of the week is actually Russell Gage. I know you're big on Rager, but Gage is getting in such a fantastic spot if Julio is not in. So I figured that since that's still a little bit up in the air, we would give you guys two wide receivers. But talk a little bit about Gage before we move back to running back. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Julio's been limited or out for the last few weeks, but even with Julio playing, if we go back to uh, the last four games, the Falcons since they're by, uh, Russell Gage is averaging eight targets per game. He had a 12-target game coming out of the bye and then a 10-target game uh, last week with Julio out. So he's been getting uh, a fair amount of work regardless of who's been on the field, playing pretty much all of the snaps. The Falcons throwing at the second highest rate uh, in the league in neutral game script uh, over the last six weeks. And this is a game that we want exposure to, the, the Chiefs and the Falcons. We have Calvin Ridley and Tyree Kill uh, as the top two values at wide receiver. Now it's going to be very hard to get to them in a lot of lineups if you're not stacking this game. But uh, Russell Gage offers us affordable exposure to that game, uh, volume in that game, again, surrounded by guys that are going to be very popular in uh, in Tyreek, in Travis Kelsey, and in Calvin Ridley. So, I mean, if, if Gage has a good game and those guys don't, regardless of what matchup or, or I'm sorry, what game type you're playing in, uh, you're really going to be uh, gaining ground on the field quite a bit. And he's just getting the usage in a game where the Falcons are going to be throwing a ton. This is the only game on the main slate with an over under above 50. Now, I know Falcons are big underdogs, but the Chiefs uh, have been really uh, involved in a lot of shootouts. Our secondary has been allowing a lot of touchdowns, a lot of yards through the air. So Gage, a really great value play for me. I mentioned we really don't have a slam duck sub 5K right now. So his price is uh, relatively low to some of the other guys we might like on the slate. Yeah, it's a little bit gross on the main slate this week. So like just it literally, I, I love the Atlanta side for all the things you mentioned. Yeah. Obviously, this over hunter is great, but also like Mahomes is 8,500. Matt Ryan is 5,800. So mm -hmm. if you believe that Mahomes is going to go off, which a lot of people do in this spot, you have to like Matt Ryan on the other side of it at that price point. We know where he's going with the ball. I, I mean, I just think that there's so many pluses in favor of the Atlanta passing game and like this game, we know where the points are going to come from. And just in general, like if Kansas City decides not to run the ball a ton into this Atlanta front, which is is, I mean, probably the right way to go about it. That just means more pass attempts on both sides, which means more plays, all of that stuff. So I love the the Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage side of Atlanta, but uh, Gage obviously much cheaper. So let's talk about running back uh, and uh, talking about just in general how uh, terrible this slate is at the high end. If we take Christian McCaffrey out of it, the highest expense or the most expensive running back is actually Nick Chubb at 7,800. But your lock of the week uh, is $100 cheaper. David Montgomery against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, he is looking pretty chalky even at 7,700. So it sounds like people are uh, totally willing to buy the top on Montgomery. Yeah, can I just say that I actually like the slate uh, the way it's set up right now? I think Love it just uh, I think it just sets up for a lot of creativity. We don't really have like outside of David Montgomery here we're talking about right here. I don't think there's a lot of slam dunk plays and it's just going to cause people to really struggle to build lineups. I mean, just at the running back position alone, uh, no Dalvin, no Kamara, uh, no Derrick Henry. Those are players that people have been blindly jamming 
uh, over the last few weeks or months even. So with those guys out, David Montgomery is pretty clearly the top running back on the slate at 7,700. We've seen him be the, depending on scoring system, running back one or running back two and DraftKings scoring running back uh, one over the past month uh, ahead of Derrick Henry. He's the only running back in the league that sees pretty much 100% of backfield touches. Now he doesn't see the 25 touches that Henry uh, or Dalvin might see, but if Chicago is using a running back, it's only David Montgomery uh, and their offense all of a sudden putting up huge points, averaging 31 points per game over the last month, 30 uh, points or more in three straight games. And Dave Montgomery has been a huge part of that. Uh, and he has a great matchup against the Jaguars. Jaguars uh, bottom three in fantasy points allowed to running backs when we adjust for strength of schedule. And we have Chicago favored by seven and a half. So the game script sets up really well for him. Yeah, I don't think there's anything more 2020 than David Montgomery chalk at 7,700. So this will be a, this will be a very fun slate, I guess. Uh, so let's uh, move on to the tight end position. Another thing that makes me want to throw up, uh, like David mm -hmm. Montgomery chalk, but uh, Logan Thomas at 4,900. He is a guy that uh, we've been attacking quite a bit this year, but it sounded like a lot of people just thought when Haskins came in here that it was going to be the Terry McLaurin show again. But last week it was basically Logan Thomas. So tell us why you like him this week. Yeah, I mean, we have a couple tight ends who we could talk about every week in Kelsey and Andrews. Uh, Kelsey, Adam Levitan pointed out, uh, set a record for salary at tight end this week, 8,500. So, I mean, if you're if you're paying for Kelsey, you're paying a true wide receiver one price now. Um, and Mark Andrews is fine. He's 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 quite expensive at 50. But Logan Thomas just really stood out because of his splits with Dwayne Haskins. I mean, the 15 target game uh, puts a little uh, weight on it, obviously, last week, but 8.3 targets per game with Haskins, 5.3 with Alex Smith, and that's with the Washington football team uh, throwing at a, a pretty significantly higher rate with Smith at quarterback. So that's, uh, that's definitely worth noting. Uh, and it sounds like Dwayne Haskins is good to go despite his uh, maskless strip club fiasco. He got fined. Sounds like he's going to be starting. And then this matchup is very good. The Panthers bottom five uh, fantasy points allowed to tight ends when we adjust for strength of schedule. I like it, man. Let's uh, let's wrap up with uh, the defense position. Uh, this is one that we're typically trying to pay down when we can. Uh, so paying down, I guess, to attack Ryan Finley seems like uh, one of the best ways that we could go, right? So the Houston Texans at home versus the Bengals, they're 2,800. They're not like mega cheap by any means. I guess on this slate, they're kind of middle of the pack. But just looking at uh, the sack expectation in this one, I think it's going to be probably a pretty popular route in cash games. I guess Houston, Dallas, probably some of the, the top options there. But uh, tell us why you like Houston at 2,800. We have five teams on the slate that are favored by more than a touchdown. Uh, four of them are priced 3,400 or higher. So if we just look at that group alone, uh, Houston is the obvious value there at 2,800. Obviously, they aren't a, a good real defense. They have a lot of problems against the run, a lot of problems against the pass, but we don't need a good real defense. We don't even really need a defense to hold a team to a few points to be a good fantasy defense. We saw them a couple of weeks ago. They have tournament winning upside on that Thanksgiving slate, uh, and a lot of that comes down to their pass rush. They have one of the best pass rushes uh, in the league. The Bengals have one of the worst pass protecting units in the league. Uh, the Bengals really tried to hide Finley last week. I think he only threw it 13 times, and that worked because they got a couple fortuitous turnovers, turned those into uh, scores, got up big on the Steelers. But I don't know if that game script plays out this week. They're nine-and-a-half-point underdogs, the Bengals, to the Texans. And if they are forced to have Finley throw uh, behind that offensive line, then it just sets up in a really good spot for Houston in their pass rush. There you have it, the Week 16 locks of the week. Hope everyone had a, a great holiday. If you're watching this after Christmas, uh, trying to catch up on the main slate, uh, it's definitely an interesting one overall. So TJ Hernandez, everyone, obviously check out all the great stuff going on at 4 for 4. Also give him a follow on Twitter at TJ Hernandez. Before you get out of here, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let us know in the comments who your favorite overall play is on the main slate for DraftKings this week. TJ, best of luck in week 16, my man. Uh, have some fun uh, out in California if you can. Uh, be safe, my man. Yeah, yeah you too.